We went through the early part of this month at CES, a few things there worth noting. And uh, let's jump into a few of them. So the first one is NVIDIA Cosmos, AI platform to train and develop autonomous vehicles and robots. We've said this before, the incredible progress going on in robot companies and they're probably, you know, I was tracking originally 20, then 40, then 60. There's got to be close to 100 uh, humanoid robot companies out there. And maybe it was battery packs that were, uh, you know, maybe it was the motors, maybe it was actuators and sensors. But without question, it's the, you know, the AI multimodal large language models that are enabling incredible progress with robots these days. Mind-boggling, because when you can take an LLM and then apply to all of these different tasks and subtasks, I, I think the domain starts to move uh, 10x, 100x faster than it did before, and that's just magical. Well, I mean, I think what's fascinating is NVIDIA has created a platform that you know high school students, college students, entrepreneurs around the world can start to develop uh, yeah. their own, you know, their own autonomous robots and vehicles. So, we're we're going to see some interesting entries in the first robotics competitions uh, coming <laughs> along. <laughs> it's yeah, going to be crazy to watch. Demon's first robotics, for sure. I mean, yeah. if you think about, you know, when uh, Sebastian Thrun won the DARPA challenge with his uh, Stanley autonomous car. 1995? Uh, yeah, thereabouts. You know, those vehicles were traveling at like three to five miles an hour with all of these sensors and the AI trying to calculate, do I go five degrees to the right? It sounds like the large language models right now and NVIDIA's platform is able to integrate all the sensor data and make it super simple for decision making. I think this is gonna, it's, you know, once you can create a platform environment, things accelerate very, very fast because new innovations get built into the platform and everybody benefits, right? Yeah, for and sure. So, Always, when you can put more and more functionality into the base operating system or into the platform layer, and and because of NVIDIA's position, they're going to see firsthand, hey, um, most of the use cases are using this sub-function, let's build that into the, and, and it's just going to lift the whole uh, uh, playing field very quickly. And what you're seeing is, as well as NVIDIA's investing in these companies, yeah. right? They're, co they're coming in. I mean, they they you have to remember, NVIDIA started as a gaming chip and then went on to Bitcoin mining and then went on to LLMs. And if Elon's prediction on humanoid robots and the same prediction that we hear from Vinod Kosla, who will be at my Abundance Summit, and we hear from Brett Adcock, who will be at the Abundance Summit, is that we're heading towards billions of these robots. It's a massive market for NVIDIA chips as well. So they're creating, uh, they're creating their future. Here's another uh, news piece uh, from CES, NVIDIA projects digits, uh, a Grace Rockwell AI supercomputer on your desk. So desk size supercomputer for AI development, a thousand times more powerful than your average laptop uh, for 3000 bucks coming out this May to a, a store near you. This for me is even bigger than the previous announcement because for the, so the, the cost of uh, you know, a, a, a very old um, used car, what used to cost. I mean, look at the power that you now have to train an AI uh, at a local level. But I think that the pressure will all move now to what data sets are you using. Yeah. Right. And 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 then the data set combined with the latest model will give you, and plus the hardware like this, phew, blows the lid off everything. I mean, the question becomes, what can the average person now do given these large open source uh, gen AI models and a supercomputer on your desk and robots roaming around your backyard or your home. I mean, uh, you know, I don't need to put this, but I don't think people are ready for what's coming. Uh, I believe that would be the understatement of the century though, Peter. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Look, we, we, we can't even grapple. Did you hear about the Uber legal case a few weeks ago? No, tell me about it. Okay, so an Uber crashed and a couple got badly injured. So they sued Uber and it was winding its way through the courts and they were going to get a big settlement. Except during this process, their 12-year-old daughter orders something on Uber Eats 
And when you click for Uber Eats, it the terms of service says you can't sue Uber for anything. It invalidated the lawsuit. Okay, so this twelve-year-old inadvertently invalidated the lawsuit of her parents. Um, uh, and the judge is like, "Hey, she clicked the box. She's had authorized use for us, and we can't even get that right, <laughs> right? We can't even figure out how to manage internet. Uh, forget all of the stuff that's going to come with robotics. You know, we uh, I used the example before of um, do I ask it to change the baby's diapers? And what happens if something goes wrong? Uh, 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 so there's. Are there's, you really expecting all of a sudden? No, 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 no. We're not. We're not. Thank God. Um, but the the in the the uh, the uh, the, acts, the consequences, this unintended consequence of this, are so profound. Yeah. Of all of these, right? I, I I'm struggling as to how we merge these into day to day life. I'm really really struggling with that. I, I'm. I remember back in 19. 19- 88. I'm going back to ancient history, all right, where most people listening to this weren't even alive yet. Uh, but back in 1988, I was running my first university, International Space University. And I was on the campus of MIT. And uh, the first Mac 128 came out. Hmm. And I bought, we had 104 students from 21 countries there, a group of Soviet students including two KGB agents as students in the group. We had wow. six students from the People's Republic of China. We had students from the Emirates and from Saudi. It was an incredible melting pot, all focused on space. And I remember putting these 128, these Mac 128s uh, on the desktop with the little floppy disk, right? Not a little floppy disk, but a little cassette disk. That's right. Like three and a half inch. And it was this massive intellectual liberator. Um, that you could go and create and copy files. And I mean, compared to this, it's probably you know, billions of fold more capable. I, I've cool. been through the full arc. I, when I was a, in grade 10, I got accepted into a university course and I was using punch cards to program uh, a mainframe. And you I know, and to go from that, like that. No. yeah, to go from that to an Apple II. Uh, which was, you know, nothing. And then Bill Gates' famous comment, 640K RAM ought to be enough for anybody. And now to <laughs> now to today, where we have trillions of times better price performance. Trillions. It's it's just, it boggles the mind. Right, and, well, and, and let's note this, that by the way, for this announcement, that Moore's Law has just been shattered beyond belief with announcements like this. Just shattered. Yeah, so, I mean, Moore's Law, which, you know, and also what Ray calls the Law of Accelerating Returns, which predates integrated circuits, you know, was roughly a doubling of price performance every 18 months to two years. And what we've seen is a 10xing per year, hmm. right? Last year on the abundance stage, Elon said he's seeing 10x every six months or 100x per year. Yeah. Insane. Humanoid robots. <laughs> Your favorite topic. My favorite topic. Listen, I just think it's going to be one of the, the biggest impactors on society. Uh, I don't have to walk the dog anymore. The robot can walk the dog. <laughs> the doggy robot can walk the dog. Yeah. Uh, so this is a company that I'm tracking. So I've been tracking now aggressively 30 of the 100 or so robot companies. And this is one that got unveiled early on uh, out, of, out of China, out of Shenzhen called Unitree. Uh, we're going to have this company at the Abundance Summit showing... Uh, their tech. They've got a humanoid robot, a couple of different uh, dog prototype robots, and their G1 Bionic upgrade. This is a sixteen thousand dollar robot. I mean, honestly, that's you know, I will buy one just to have in the garage for fun, if nothing else. <laughs> but check out check out this this video. Love the soundtrack. Feels like the 60s. Not, not to miss the soundtrack, yeah. So this robot is running down. Faster the, uh, than a speeding train. The rails on rocks, up hills. The smoothest walking humanoid and running robot in the world. And it's going to... And... The best thing, it's going to make me feel tall. It's only four foot three inches tall. <laughs>
so we're going to have a couple of these walking around the halls at, at the Abundance Summit. Uh, it's equipped with three LIDARs. And this is where a multimodal AI comes in, right? Where the AI understands what it's seeing, when it's being spoken to, uh, and uh, how to respond. I have my standard um, issues with this whole thing, okay? What, uh, what's the I'll throw out two. Okay. One is, why the hell does it have to look humanoid when it could have three legs or four <sighs> legs and do way more? I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's looking humanoid that question to, to be of comfort. I know, it's, but that's my still my, my beef around <laughs> this. Okay? It could be so much more yeah, utility. Uh, By the way, in, in, the, in the comments, we tell, 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 Salim, tell Salim that you agree with me that they should be humanoid robots and not have six-armed, four-legged robots. I want to see an octopus. I want to know it's a robot. I want, I want to, if it put clothes on, you'd have to think it was a human being. That would freak everybody out. I, I'm sorry. That's number one. That's number one. C3PO and yes, Data yes, didn't have yes. six legs. We'll anthropomorphize these too much too quickly. Okay. Second thing is, I'm, I, you know, you can have like these little glitches and he goes, somehow the robot suddenly thinks it's a cat and we can't get it down from the tree. <laughs> and, and you're going to have these incredibly crazy things happen. And we're going to have to deal with a hundred little things. Uh, the neighbor is going to call you up going, can you please get the goddamn robot out of my garage? It's found an electrical power outlet and it's sucking all the juice out. I'm coming over to sue you. It, it's just going to go rampant with this stuff. And so I think there's going to be quite a lot of mayhem um, as the unintended consequences of this thing play out. What could possibly go wrong? I, <laughs> I just don't know. But as I said before, it's going to be a comedian's dream watching wow. this thing. Robin Williams would go crazy with this if he was alive. You know, NVIDIA accelerates humanoid development, right? Their uh, G-R-O-O-T, Groot Blueprint, allows developers to create massive data sets for training humanoid based on imitation learning. And so I think that's extraordinary. Like, Hey, robot, watch me make my cup of coffee and make it exactly this way every time. I, I think this is massive um, because not just that, it'll learn from 5,000 other robots making coffee and the, air, the, the improvement rate will be incredible. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I think this may be the area where, you know, for me, if I think back to robotics, the reason the robots are so powerful and so important in manufacturing is that when you're building a car, you could have a robot open and close a door 5,000 times to test the hinges and the door lock mechanism, et cetera, et cetera. And you just, we just built incredibly stable cars very quickly because you could have a robot doing all of that, right? And now when you have a collective... You just, you just took uh, a job away from my 13-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> I was standing there doing this. Yeah, you'd get bored in two seconds as a 13-year-old and, and walk off. Um uh, but but now you can have 10,000 robots, 5,000 robots, all making cups of coffee, sharing that knowledge amongst themselves and really improving the collective set. That This is, again, one of those platform plays that lifts everything up. I think this is huge. So excited. Yeah. Well, uh, here's a, a news item for TechCrunch that Samsung expands in robotics. I think we're going to see all the major electronic manufacturers get into robotics. It is low-hanging fruit. Uh, for them yeah. to integrate with their world. You know, I have to say the, you know, I love Samsung as a company, but their their robot design looks kind of clunky and boring. All right, listen, I'm sorry. This is no optimist, no figure, not even a, uh, a, a unit tree. Look, it's going to, a, a, a thousand flowers are going to bloom. It's We have a Cambrian explosion of this stuff, and it's going to create a huge, huge um, varied set of uh, formats, in uh, use cases, uh, function capabilities. It's going to move very quickly because of that. I love this. Uh, this is Elon's prediction. Uh, we're aiming to have several thousand of these built in 2025 when he's referring to the Optimus Gen 2. Initially, we'll test them out on Tesla. Uh, and then assuming things go well, we'll build 10x that output next year. We're aiming for 50,000 Optimus robots in 2026. And so as many as 500,000 robots in three years time. 
And it's just, you know, we talk about deceptive to disruptive, right? The doubling of small numbers. Uh, when I interviewed him in October of this past year, you know, his prediction was 10 billion robots by 2040. And if you double 500,000, you know, uh, 10 times, uh, you'll get there pretty quickly. I think it'd be great, but given the time it took from his announcement of a robo taxi to actually getting it, this I, I would like to take this with a grain of salt. Um, uh -huh. But but the trend is the important one, right? Yeah. It, it's it if it happens in three years or four years or five years, it doesn't matter. It's going to happen, and when it does, it's going to be it's going to be a game changer at so many different levels.